What is going on everybody? Today I just want to talk about Ethereum, a little bit about Ethereum, some news that's going on, and some good things to keep in mind whenever you're talking about Ethereum. So let's get to it. Welcome back everyone. So let's take a look at this article. This was on Medium. And it was done by Loon Network, I believe. Uh, so Ethereum takes, you know, uh, quite a bit of crap about, you know, from other projects and communities for not being scalable. Uh, there may be problems on this front, but Ethereum is so configurable and useful. Any of these problems can most likely be overcome fairly easily. For example, I doubt that and any that there's any way a 16 million dollar usd market cap company like loom uh would be would use ethereum if it wasn't a viable solution for high throughput and performance such as uh, you know decentralized apps such as finance re uh, relates um, finance related and games and casinos and that's something that Loom Network is kind of working on, it looks like. I don't know a lot about Loom, but it is definitely something that requires some scalability. And I don't believe that they would be using Ethereum if it wasn't going to fit their needs. So uh, it's just something to keep in mind there. This is just the coin market cap for Ethereum, for uh, Loom, and you can see here the market cap and all of that stuff. And Ethereum has far more developers than any other project, and the gap is getting is actually getting larger. So there's more. You'll see articles talking about all the developers that are leaving uh, Ethereum, but there are more going to Ethereum than leaving. So. It's kind of like a silly argument. I, I believe it's kind of a silly argument if you think about it. Uh, so yeah, more developers are coming into the network than, than actually leaving. I've said this before, or at least something like it. It makes no difference how fast you can process, process transactions because that's one of the things that a lot of projects will say is that they have a higher throughput or through our higher uh, TPS. Uh, transactions per second but that doesn't make any difference if no one is using your system right so uh, blockchain projects need uh, users not more features is the easiest way to think about it And in addition to that, this article uh, actually says, if you don't have developers building applications on your blockchain, you're effectively building a ghost town. And I, I, I like that, that structure, I like, I like what that sounds like. I like that saying, because it's actually very accurate. Uh, something to keep in mind about Ethereum itself is Ethereum has better tools and infrastructure for DAP development, de decentralized app development than any other platform and that and this makes creating apps dApps easier for developers and one of the things that ethereum does pretty well is it does not sacrifice decentralization for that performance or for performance when it comes to blockchains there's a fundamental law called the scalability trilemma and basically it's like a law of physics for a blockchain that says that you can only have two of three properties uh, in a blockchain. You can either have decentralization, scalability, or security, not or, but two of those. So two of either decentralization, scalability, or security in order for it to work. Uh, decentral decentralization is important because uh, drawing for dr drawing in developers because they can trust that their app won't be banned by some central authority in the future and the base layer will always be intact. So in the case of Ethereum, you know, it's decentralized, GPU mineable, ASIC mineable now too. 
uh, but uh, you know, it's very decentralized and you can't really go to the Ethereum company and do anything, right? So it's a good solid um, base layer and, you know, developers are still building on it. They, they like it. It's going, it stays intact. Uh, from the article here, you can see that Ethereum can be used by anyone for any purpose without needing permission from anyone. So there is no one that can stop you, stop you from uploading a piece of code into the Ethereum blockchain. And no one can stop your users from actually executing it. Ethereum is a per permissionless platform that can't be shut down without shutting down the entire internet. And the most important part of this is the base layer decentralization. And while all that's great, all those are great features, to have such a strong and decentralized base network it's just not possible to run all the dApps that are going to be created on that particular layer. So not on the base layer of Ethereum is not what running all these apps across the internet is designed to do. The scaling is going to have to be done at layer two or above, meaning at the application layer. These apps will need their own sidechain to actually operate on. Another reason devs will stay on Ethereum is because it's tried and true. It has withstood the several years and hasn't been hacked. Yes, applications built on Ethereum have been hacked, but not Ethereum itself. That's an important distinction because you, you, know, you have situations where they built code on top of Ethereum smart contracts and those were hacked, but the underlying base layer was not hacked. Uh, and, you know, we've all heard the, the buzzword uh, of late 2019 and probably what you'll hear all throughout 2020 is DeFi or decentralized finance. And all these factors contribute to why Ethereum is leading the pack as the DeFi platform. In just one year, the total value locked in DeFi in staking and uh, masternodes has grown from 206 million to more than 660 million. That's 2.5% increase. Um, and, and about 2.5%, uh, actually that's more than 2.5, that's almost three, or three, it's over 3%, three times, three X. Uh, but about 2.5% of ETH's total supply, or 2.7 million ETH, is actually locked in DeFi platforms. And I believe that that's gonna vastly increase in 2020. If it continues to grow at the same pace as this year, the total value locked could exceed 1.5 billion with a B by the end of 2020. Now, this is not to say that Ethereum is perfect, it's not, but it has a significant first mover advantage that will probably keep developers on the platform for the foreseeable future. There's not really a reason for them to leave at this point. So tell me what you think about Ethereum overall as an overall project. Do you think it's going to hang, hang around in the same uh, vicinity as far as value goes? Do you think that developers are going to continue to build on it? Do you think that, um, what do you think about ETH 2.0, the staking, uh, the, the fact that, um, you know, the recent uh, fork, uh, you know, I, what, what happened with the, hash rate. I don't think the hash rate changed. I'm drawing a blank here on, on what actually happened with uh, Ethereum for the uh, hard fork. Oh, that's right. It was just a, it was just features. It wasn't a hashing issue. So, um, so yeah, there, there, I think the difficulty is steadily rising. Like we talked about in that, in that actual uh, episode there where we were talking about uh, the, the forks coming up. So the difficulty is increasing still, hopefully, um, Hopefully that'll decrease once they fork again, I think in January, or it's just a few weeks, it's like five to six weeks or something after. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Uh, but yeah, let's keep the, going, keep the comments going in, or keep the conversation going in the comments below. And I will see you guys next time. Stay savage, everybody.